Hey guys, it's Tori, and as you can tell, today I am kicking off my vlog for the local Shakespeare Festival in my state. I am going on a little trip there with a friend. It is a few hours away, so we'll be staying there for a couple of days for a weekend trip while we see three plays, and I'm so, so excited. I've been dying for this trip for so long, just with all the stress of my new job and just stress of life decisions I'm having to make right now. It will be nice to get away for a few days and do a lot of things that I really enjoy. First of all, of course, like I said, it's a Shakespeare festival, so we're seeing two Shakespeare plays and another play that I believe is inspired by Shakespeare. It's part of the Shakespeare festival either way. So the first one that is not written by Shakespeare is Pirates of Penzance, and then the other two we're seeing both by Shakespeare are Richard III, which is my favorite that I've read by Shakespeare, and Comedy of Errors, so really excited for both of those. We'll give reviews once we see them. I'm also planning on doing a lot of other fun things that I love to do, going to bookstores being one of them. There's actually an independent bookstore. So where this festival is taking place is at a university that I used to attend. So I know the area pretty well. Plus I have family that live in a city that's not very far from that where we'll actually be staying. But anyway, I know that area pretty well and so it will be kind of fun to be around there and there's this independent bookstore in that little town that I know about that I love. It's one of my favorite bookstores and so it will be so fun to visit there and support them a little bit while I'm there. And then I also plan to probably go to Barnes & Noble in the city that's nearby just because it's a pretty good, decent sized Barnes & Noble, well organized. It's one of my favorites that I've been in. I don't really know why, just something about the setup and the size just works very well for me. I have another Barnes & Noble that's a little closer to me that I think it's just smaller so their options are not as wide ranging and it gets a little frustrating for me sometimes but the one that's down there is a lot bigger so I'm excited to go in there and pick maybe one or two things up depending on what I get at the independent bookstore because I'll go there first but anyway we also plan some historical site outings and things like that which I'm really excited for I'll be able to see some extended family while I'm down there I'm actually staying we are staying, my friend and I are staying with my aunt, so we'll be able to see her. And then I plan on seeing my grandparents as well while I'm not down there. And we'll be able to eat at some of my favorite places to eat, at least one place. There's this one place that has really good street tacos that I'm so excited to go to. You know, it's the little things in life, it's the little things. So very excited about all that, not gonna lie. Probably not going to be reading very much. I'm the one driving, so I won't be able to like read on the drive down. I may end up listening to an audiobook although sometimes I feel bad when I'm like driving and I'm only with one other person when I like ha I have to have my earphones in to listen to my audiobook because I don't want to bother them and then I can't hear them as well and so it just ends up being a little bit of a mess so I usually just listen to music when I'm driving so I probably won't even be able to listen to much audiobook but we'll see maybe I, the audiobook I'm listening to right now is Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy it's a reread for me love the story unfortunately the narrator while not awful to the point where I'm like I can't listen to this anymore he's just not great and so there are things that I feel like are being delivered in a way that make them less exciting for me. And so it's making it me feel like I'm struggling reading this book that I love. But then I'm like, but if I just think about and focus on the plot and things going on, I love it. It's just all the, just the way, yeah, the narrator is reading it that is making it less enjoyable, unfortunately. But I mean, it's fine. It's what I'm listening to. And I honestly am struggling to figure out what even type of audiobook I want to listen to right now. So it's just kind of, because it's a reread, I'm like, you know what? It's something that I can kind of listen to and it's okay if I, you know, my mind wanders and I miss a lot of it because I know the story, it's fine. So anyway, that's what I'm listening to right now. So we'll see if I get any of listening to that done on this trip. Again, I doubt it, but we'll see. I also pretty much definitely am not going to do any physically physical reading, but of course being me and being a reader, as I'm sure many of you can understand, I have to bring a book with me just in case. So I'm bringing What Matters in Jane Austen by John Mullen, which I am currently working on. And so far so good, I'm about 40 pages in and it's very intriguing. I It's kind of a um, literary criticism about Jane Austen and just dis different aspects of her stories, different details within her stories and how they kind of connect and show a little bit about her own, Jane Austen's own values and just 
things like that that's really, really intriguing and fun to read about. Um, I'm honestly surprised that I am so engaged in this. Like, I would be okay to just sit and read this for a few hours, whereas most of the time, nonfiction, no matter what kind of nonfiction it is, I can only read a bit at a time. Like, it's hard for me to really just sit and like, fall into it, but I feel like I could with this easily if I wanted to. Um, and maybe that's just my reading taste changing. I also felt that way with the Brontes by Julia, Juliet Barker. Is that was, that was her name. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, that one I also felt like I could fall into. So again, maybe my reading tastes and capabilities when it comes to nonfiction and focus on nonfiction are growing and developing, which is exciting. But anyway, really liking that. So far, again, don't really think I'm gonna get much into it on this trip, but we'll see how it goes. I did just finish The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow yesterday and really enjoyed it. And I was buddy, buddy reading that with several other wonderful individuals who are still reading it. They technically are trying to finish it by the end of this weekend, um, but I finished it since I was going on this trip. So I'll still be kind of chatting with them as we go along throughout the next few days, but we'll see. So we're actually leaving on my trip tomorrow morning. So today is Thursday and I have work this evening, this late afternoon evening time that hopefully will go by really fast because I'm too excited. I just, I'm so worried it's gonna be a session that just drags and I need it to go fast because I'm just too excited. Um, my friend Kariana, who's going with me, is staying the night tonight at my apartment because we want to leave as not super early in the morning, like nine-ish, um, but that will just give her a little bit extra chance to sleep in a little bit more than she otherwise would have, especially because she lives, her house is like 30 minutes away from mine. So it, this kind of like decreases her drive by about 30 minutes. So anyway, she's staying the night tonight and then we'll leave tomorrow morning. Our first play is at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So we just gotta be down there with enough time to eat lunch and then go and be ready for the play, so that should be good. I am seriously so excited for everything we're doing. It's going to be great, and I hope that you enjoy watching everything we end up doing and enjoy just the ambiance and discussion of Shakespeare, because that's what this is gonna be. Hi, friends, so we made it down south. Here's Kariana. We just saw Pirates of Penzance, and I really liked it. It was very entertaining. I didn't really know what to expect, to be totally honest. So it was pretty good, you know, love them guys in open shirts, so always good. Um, and now we're going into Main Street Books, which is one of my favorite bookstores that I'm so excited to go in. So we'll get some good footage in there for you guys, and yeah. friends so it is the next day because I'm really bad at vlogging but as you will have seen we were able to do some book shopping I'll show you my souvenir haul at the end of all of this 
and got some really good things. And then we did Richard III, which was fabulous, loved it, everything I could have wished for and more. Um, it was, all the acting was really, really good, and I just love Evil Richard so much, it was so good. Um, but today, you will have seen we went to a little historic site, and now we're going into Barnes & Noble because why not? And we'll continue to get some good clips in. Um, I'll give you a little bit more details on my thoughts on all the plays probably at the end of this just while I organize them a little bit more. But yes, Richard the Third was fabulous. Tonight we're seeing Comedy of Errors and it should all be really good, so. <laughs> home and we're gonna give some final thoughts sorry this was a very montagey vlog I felt like my friend even though she was okay with doing it I felt like she felt a little awkward so I tried to not do it quite as much but wrapping up the trip it was so so much fun like seriously doing everything that I love to do the plays were magnificently done Richard the third was amazing it always makes me sad watching it or reading it or anytime I experience it just because I personally I think it's just so sad that they make Richard look so evil. I mean, I'm not saying he was like a super great guy, but they just make him look so bad. Like every death that happened during that time, it was all his fault. And it was just so much, but they did such a good job. So, so good. Even though there was like a medical emergency partway through, which was very interesting. And it was kind of ironic because it was right after for those of you who know about the play it was right after lord hastings death and so they brought out like a severed a fake severed head in a bag that was like bloodied <laughs> and it was like right after that scene and they like threw it on the ground and so the actors left but there was still this like fake bloody head basically on the stage while we're dealing with this medical issue so it was a little eerie but anyway it all worked out the guy who ended up going to the hospital seemed okay so hopefully it was all good but anyway it did end up being really really good and then comedy of errors also was incredible it was so funny they ended up doing it 70s themed so they used all the same lines from the actual play but they were all dressed in 70s clothing and it worked so well it was so good actually the guy that played Richard in Richard the third was a character in comedy of errors and he's like a goldsmith from the 70s and he just had that style he did so good playing both parts so that was really really great 
laugh out loud, hilarious, funny. So we're definitely probably going to go next year again, which I'm so happy about. Actually, this friend I went with is not, at least wasn't necessarily a huge fan of Shakespeare, but she hadn't really experienced much Shakespeare and she had never seen one live. And now she's like pretty hooked, at least on the Shakespeare Festival. So definitely next year we'll have to go together. And I'm super excited. Next year they're doing King Lear and they're doing The Tempest and All's Well That Ends Well. At least those three, they may do another Shakespeare play, but they're also, for non-Shakespeare, they're doing Sound of Music and Sweeney Todd, both of which are very fun. So very excited about that. They are doing other plays, but I didn't recognize the names of any of them. So anyway, so we'll have to see what we're able to get in next year, but it was so much fun. I had never like gone full on for the Shakespeare Festival. I did, like I said, I used to go to school down there. So I did at least see one play while I was going to school there. And that was Twelfth Night, which was really, really good. But anyway, yeah, it was my first time really going and it was so, so much fun. So definitely excited to go next year. And yeah, definitely if you're anywhere near Utah, definitely see if you can go to the Shakespeare Festival because they do a really, really good job every year. And this year proved that to me. I really, it was just so good. Anyway, I thought before I'd wrap this up that I would give you a little haul. I got a lot of books as well as a few non-bookish things, but I guess they're kind of bookish because they're Shakespeare related, but I did get several books. So let's go through the non like books, bookish type things, and then we'll get into the books. So first of all, they had a t-shirt for each of the plays that they were doing. And so I of course got the Richard III shirt. And look how good it looks. It has the bleeding crown with the three in the blood and it looks so good. And it was their 60th anniversary. So that has that right there. So I really love, love that. I think it's so much fun and I'll probably wear it tomorrow. Although part of me is like, should I wear this to work? It's a little gruesome. I don't know. I'll think about it, but I really, really love that. Then I've mentioned on here before, but I actually collect keychains. It's kind of my souvenir of choice when I go places besides going to independent bookstores. So I got a Shakespeare Festival keychain and it has a Hamlet quote on the back. This above all to thine own self be true. So that's really fun to add to my collection. Sorry, I didn't allow it to focus on that, but you know, I read it off to you, so you know what that said. And then the last non-book item I got was Much Ado About Nothing's Shakespearean Sticky Notes. So it's just a little notepad with a bunch of different types of sticky notes, and I was running low on tabs. So I saw this and I was like, well, may as well. It's super cute and it's just like an additional little souvenir to get. So really excited about that. Then we get to the books. Now the first thing I want to show you is actually the only like Shakespearean book I got and that is Shakespeare After All by Marjorie Garber. This seems like it's a read where each chapter is just a different kind of essay about a different play. And so it's kind of more one that I'll probably read as I read the plays. Just after I finish one, I can come to this and read the little essay chapter, chapter about it. And I'm really excited to have something like that because I feel like Shakespeare is one that I really enjoy reading, but I'd like to dig a little deeper when I read his work um, if possible. So this will kind of allow me to do that. And it also has a really beautiful cover. I actually really, really like that if you can see it. It's just very classy looking and I like it. All right, then let's move into what I got from that independent bookstore that we went to first. So first of all, I got, oh, let's get some of these price tags off really quick. Okay, so first off I got the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Marianne Schaefer and Annie Barrows. I didn't realize this was by two authors. Anyway, this is a book I've really wanted to read for a long time, set in World War II, set on the island of Guernsey, which was the only place in the UK to be, what's the word, taken over by the Nazis and it's about a book club that went on there during the war and it's really really interesting I've heard I've seen the film adaptation that's on Netflix and absolutely loved it so I'm excited to have a copy of the book it's also an epistolary novel meaning it is written in letters and that's always kind of fun to read so I'm excited to pick this up whenever I get the chance. Up next we have When Christ and a Saint Slept by Sharon K. Penman. This is the same author that wrote The Sun and Splendor about Richard III, which I'm currently reading and loving. And this one is about Eleanor of Aquitaine, who is someone I know very little about, and I don't know if she's a historical fi figure, excuse me, that I really care to know a lot about, but 
I'd like to see. So I really like her writing so far in Sun and Splendor, so I'm excited to give this a try. And it also has a pretty decent cover. I mean, not a favorite cover necessarily of mine, but I do like it a bit. So there's that. And then this last one was kind of a surprising find and a funny one because I recently watched a video by Heather from Fresh Parchment talking about Regency nonfiction, Regency and Georgian era nonfiction and that she would recommend and she mentioned this book and I thought it sounded really interesting and then I ended up finding it at this bookstore in a really good edition and for cheap. So it is Marie Antoinette The Journey by Antonia Fraser. So this is a nonfiction about Marie Antoinette and Heather says it's really really good and it sounded fascinating to me. I also have only recently heard of Antonia Fraser at all from David Wiley who is doing a read every book by with Antonia Fraser. So he's trying to read all of her books or at least attempt to read all of her books. I think the first one he read by her was a DNF so that's unfortunate. But I am excited to read this. I don't know a ton about Marie Antoinette so I I feel like this will be a fun way to get to know her as a person and again this cover is absolutely beautiful so very excited to read that okay and then just two more so nearly done we also have a passage to India by E.M. Forster I am out of E.M. Forster books that I have not read yet and I ended up actually getting this from Barnes & Noble we stopped there and I usually when I go to Barnes & Noble really try to pick books that I specifically would be willing to buy from Barnes & Noble at full price which which doesn't always happen but in the case of this I do really want to collect all of Ian Forster's work in this edition and it's an edition that while it's not super rare I see it pretty regularly I still want to take advantage when I do see it and it was only like ten dollars so I ended up picking it up and I really love this cover in particular with the flowers and I'm excited to read more Forrester, so we have that. And last, we have a book that I found on the bargain shelves at Barnes & Noble, and it's a book that I have had a curiosity to read, but I haven't picked it up because I have another book by this author. It's a new-to-me author, and I have another book by her that I want to read first before I got any more, but this one is a beautiful hardcover that they had for $7 at Barnes & Noble, brand new, and I just couldn't pass up that deal, and it's one I do have a curiosity about. It's actually one that Jennifer Brooks read earlier this year and piqued my interest in it. But that is The Confessions of Young Nero by Margaret George. So this is the first in, du in a duology about Emperor Nero and I, like I said, Jennifer really liked it. There were things she didn't love about it, like the fact that they make Nero look like a saint, which, you know, I do always have issues with that when there's a maligned figure in history. I agree with the idea of making them, like representing them as less evil because sometimes it's a little over the top and you're like, come on, they weren't, probably weren't that evil. And if you look into it, they really weren't. But I think it's hard to fully sell me on people who have been so strongly maligned and so strongly like hated throughout history that there's no reason behind that like i just feel like there has to be some reasoning behind that so same thing with richard the third i'm like he's he wasn't a perfect person and he wasn't good all the time he had to have some evil in him because otherwise we wouldn't look at him the way we do and he's involved in one of the greatest historical mysteries ever and the chance chances are very high that he was behind it so like you can't make him look like a total saint in my eyes and the same thing with Nero I just you can't make him look like a perfect person but that also doesn't mean that I hate books where they do make them look like perfect people I think there is some interest in getting a perspective like that so anyway I've heard good things like I said Margaret George I'm really hoping I end up liking her work because she has a lot of books I have a lot of interest in reading so hopefully when I read Helen of Troy which is the other one I have by her I'll like it be able to read this and continue to like her stuff and be able to dig deep into a lot of her other work because she has a lot of books like this that are focused on specific historical figures so anyway very excited about that and really everything that I got so thank you so much for watching let me know down below your favorite Shakespeare play what you thought of the Shakespeare plays that I saw if you've read them or had any experience with them I'd love to know thank you again so much for watching and I will see you next time bye